This is the death of relationship dumbassification. A thought provoking conversation with the voice of reason. An exploration is a why you and your girl just can't relate. The world is tuned in to the voice of reason. Blowing up the foxhole every Thursday evening. If your man is tripping, then talk this over before you leave. Maybe y'all can make it work it. If not, he can tell you exactly how to tell him to kick rocks. Intelligence with lots of comedy. It's not your average show. It's so William's the voice of reason on foxhole radio. Ladies and gentlemen, let that ride. Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, has returned for another Thursday session. Really quickly before I introduce my topic and my guest tonight, I want to say for all you guys, first time tuning in, you guys missed last week. We talked about Haiti. Please don't forget to get out there and, and support these people because it's not going to go away just one day, you know. That, that devastating earthquake, the biggest earthquake to hit Haiti in 200 years. And, and if, if this is your first time tuning into The Voice of Reason, we did a, a, a Zoe Williams Haiti Relief, you know, show last, last week with Macy Gray and a few other people. Listen, it, this is a part of the human family now. This is, this is humanity here. So we got to keep doing what we can do to help these people. There's children out there that ain't eating, that ain't, I mean, it was already bad before, but you understand what I'm saying? Really, don't fall off. Don't go to sleep on them. You know, when you go to sleep tonight, say a prayer for those folks out there. That's my, that's my word on that. Now, um, also, you can reach out to, uh, and help, help the foxhole and why Clef, if you want to, you know, help Haiti. If you want to join us in helping, just text Yale to 501-501 to donate, if that's what you want to do. Text YELE, 501-501, and YELE is spelled Y-E-L-E. So please reach out. It's very important. The foxhole does care. So does Sirius XM, so it's important that we do that. Now, my topic, reach out. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Sexpectations is tonight's topic. Are your sexual desires and drives realistic what do I mean by that now this is what we're gonna do this is very interesting normally I just hit you in the head with a gang of questions and I do have a gang of questions but I want my callers to call in and tell me what is the craziest sex act right you have been asked slash expected to participate in did you do it or did you just back out of it what is the craziest thing you've been expected to do sexually Asked and or expected, right? I got I got a serious expectation. Every day, every day I come home, you you, you got to give me the BJ special. Just fresh off the plane, I step in the door. Just you know, alleviate the pressure. Eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six is the number to dial. Sexpectations is tonight's topic. What are some unrealistic expectations? We'll, we'll, we'll go in that. Is it realistic for a woman to expect a man to get her off every single time? Hmm? How many marriages have ended because of sexual frustrations? Let's talk about it. I got professionals in the building. I'm in the building. Sexpectations. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. You're listening to Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio, 7 p.m. on the west, 10 p.m. on the east, as my homeboy Speedy would say. Much love to you, brother. Listen, y'all got to call me and talk to me about what we're doing here. It's important. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Now, on to my special guests. She's a regular. She has her master's degree, her Ph.D. She's got 37 degrees in fornication, uh, masturbation, uh, sexual manipulation, toys. I don't know where she gets the degree from. Where, where? Arizona State? That's my undergraduate degree. Okay. I she, have uh, out of San Francisco State a branch. Right. She's got uh, a degree in, in, in lubrication. Uh, she's got a lot of stuff. Um, she's here. Uh, she's going to be our resident sex doctor. So it's important that uh, you guys get to know her because she'll be coming through from time to time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one more again my friend, Dr. Alex Moran. 
Howdy. Thank you, Zoe, for having me back again. It is very much appreciated, and I'm so happy to be here and share information and answer all those questions that you guys have out there. The key is knowledge, people. Mm, let me ask you, what is the craziest sexual expectation a guy you were you were with before had for you? He expected this. Like, you me gotta personally? do this. Me personally? Yeah. Well, you know, I don't really classify things as crazy. Uh -oh. uh, everyone likes wow. what they like, and normative behavior has such a broad range that mm -hmm. what is crazy to me might be normal to you, so who am I to call you crazy? Well, I'm looking at my Facebook right now, and I'm looking at my Twitter, because I have a super phone, and, uh, <laughs> and at the end of the day, um, I've been hearing a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, one sister po posted on the, uh, on my Facebook. She posted uh, that a guy asked her if he could give her or if she could give him a chocolate shower. Yeah, that yeah. is a unique um, well, request, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It's I it's one that I don't personally favor because it's dirty and you know feces yeah. has a lot of bacteria yeah. in it and there's a lot of risk of exposure of diseases yeah. so I wouldn't recommend it at yeah. all for health reasons. The only thing that uh, the only thing that chocolate and feces share is the color I think. <laughs> anyway. Let me move on from that nastiness. Uh, we have one more guest. She's very important to this show. And she you could hear her all over radio. I mean, she's on everybody's show. And, you know, she has a unique uh, perspective. She went to school for this, and she should know what she's talking about. For the past 18 years, this young lady has coupled her unique experience with information from the American Institute of Sexual Studies to create a revolutionary outlook on modern relationships. I'm not going to get into her whole bio. She's been on HBO Real Sex, that tape, that television series. Like I said, she's been on a myriad of um, radio shows, and she's a she, you know she's a regular on radio uh, across the country. Without further ado, let me introduce. And, and look, the name is interesting, and her face matches the name. Jackie Fine is on the line with us. Holler at me, Jackie. <laughs> hey, Zoe, how you doing? Thanks so much for having me on. Wow, are you, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you sound really good right now. <laughs> Does, is, is there somebody out there who wants to talk to Jackie Fine? Because she sounds good as hell. Do you, have you ever done phone sex? Uh, no, 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 Never? no, no. no. Just, yeah, have you ever worked no. for like a little company? Because you would make a killing. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jesus Christ, are you married? Yes, I am. I you hope he's I not around. For the past 10 years. Wow. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Once again, the question for tonight, and I encourage all you callers out there, reach out to me right now. Answer this question for me. What is the craziest sex act you've been asked and expected to participate in? I want to know what you think. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear your stories. I encourage you to reach out to me. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. I'm on Twitter right now. At Zoe Williams, you got to reach out, share your stories, and I'll hit you back. At Zoe Williams on Twitter, or you can hit me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook at the right now as well. So let's let's talk about this because I want this conversation to continue well after this show is over. So, ladies, yes, put your seatbelt on. We about to have some callers, and let's talk to them and see what these crazy stories are, and let's see if our expertise can help them in any way. Joe from California, you're on the Voice of Reason. It's your it's your time to chime. Holla. How you doing, hey. Joe? Hey! Yeah, man. Yeah. And thank you, Joe. Good night. Let's move on. Cloud from Buffalo. You're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm, I'm still laughing at you. Hey, what's going on, Zoe, yeah. man? Long time no here. Happy New Year and all that good shit. Hey, good looking, Cloud. Let me say this. If you're missing a chromosome, don't call the show tonight. <laughs> Cloud, holla at me, brother. Okay, the, I, I say uh, by far the most craziest sex act I've been asked to perform was this one, uh, this one girl I was dating. You know, we clicked or whatever, and, you know, we had a lot of rough sex, you know, that's cool, because I like it, bro. but then 
one night she said she wanted to try something new and she opened up her closet and had this compartment that I'd never seen before and she opened it up and had like different types of whips and handcuffs and shit like that and she wanted to like, you know, tie me up and like take me and she had paddles and shit. And I was like, I've had my ass look countless times growing up. Why the fuck would I want that now? <laughs> you had a flashback of dad or mom or somebody beating your ass, huh? Yeah, and she was like, and she said, well, all the guys that, like, I've dated, have, you know, have done this with me or whatever. I was like, well, I mean, nah, I can't do it. I was like, so, we, we're not going to go there tonight. <laughs> Man, so you, 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 didn't, you didn't allow her to spank you just a little bit? I mean, shit. Hell no. I, mean, I was it, like, I, you, can, you can bite me, you can scratch me, you can claw me. Don't whoop do all me. that, but but when it comes to fucking whipping and shit like that, no, nah, because like too much pain is a turnoff for me. Ah, got it. Just a flashback of stealing out your mama's purse, huh? Wow. <laughs> wow. I appreciate the call, man. Thanks for reaching out to the Voice of Reason, man. You brought Buffalo, New York, New York into the building, and you helped us forget about Joe. Marcus from Tex, you're in the Voice of Reason. It's your time to chime. <laughs> Yeah, man, um, I had a woman that's a PE coach, man, and she would go to, you know, work and get all sweaty and everything, man, and then um, she would come home, man, all dirty and ask me to lick her behind, man. I, I didn't understand Ooh. that, man. She wouldn't even take a bath, man. Wow. Hey, uh, big homie, I need you to, uh, Marcus, just turn your radio down just a little bit. I appreciate it. She wanted you. She didn't take a bath. She uh, come on, man. She wanted you to toss her salad when the salad yes. had little granules of dirt in it. Yeah. She didn't. She didn't wash the leaves. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't wash off the lettuce. <laughs> come on, man. That's just foul. That, but that is foul, man. <laughs> my question is, would you do it to get her off? She wasn't that attractive. So, um, it's, boo -boo. It's maybe, you know, boo -boo chips just ain't on the menu. I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. No, maybe, you know, maybe Lisa Ray status, maybe, but <laughs> no, nah, no, no, uh -huh. no, not even Lisa Ray, big homie. Hey, man, hey, seriously, bro, I appreciate the call, man. Thanks for reaching out. Appreciate it. Gary from Atlanta, you're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. Hey, what's up, Zoe? Hey, man, I had a girl once that used to lick my ass and do a lot. Now I'm so used to it with my main girl, you know, I do it to her, but is it wrong for me to expect that she do it for me? Is that like, you know, once you get something good, you know, you want it some more, and, you know, I'm sort of stuck in a, you know, catch-22 now. I don't want my main oh, girl to oh, Okay, so let's do this, Gary. Let's do this. We have two highly intelligent sex experts on my right. panel right now. They're both going to ask your que answer your question. Jackie? Yes. We talk to him. <laughs> now, what is what is the question you want to know? Well, well, well I've, I've sort of gotten accustomed to it from a former girlfriend. You know, she used to toss my salad. Uh -huh. You know, it, it first started out teabagging, and then she started tossing my salad. And you just do it a lot. Now, with my main girl, I'm married now. And, uh, you know, I do it to her. Not that much, but I do it to her occasionally. Is it wrong for me to expect? That she do she does it for me, you know. And plus, I don't know disease wise, you know, is that is that is that stuff? Uh, you so know, is that um, the only way that you find intense intimacy as far as like wanting to get off in order for her to do that and to you and for you to do that to um, her? Well, for me, it's more like foreplay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's just like you know, it's, it's what you do the first. It's the first thing you do, mm -hmm. and then you work your way into the sex. And I do that, you know. For her, you know, because I like, you know, eat her out, and then I go down a little bit deeper, then I come back up and I just hit it. Uh -huh. So I just want to know, you know, is it wrong for me to, to expect that from? When I asked her about it, you know, she didn't want to do it, so I, I want to. Well, if, if she doesn't want to do it, it's wrong to pressure somebody to do anything mm -hmm. that they don't want to do. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, He's but... like, oh, that's the bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't want to listen. Jackie, will you will you tell him to stop it? Stop pressuring his women. Come on, girl. If I, if I, if I stopped it on her, she she want me to do it on her. But you know, you know what I mean. Oh man. Well, yeah, but at the I same know. time, what I'm hearing is like you know that's what you know you're that excites you. But then there's other things that you can do uh, as far as incre increasing and intensifying the or orgasmic experience that you're having 
that would cause you just as much pleasure. Right. Wow. Right. Well, uh, listen, Gary, I, uh, I'm about to take a quick break, but Dr. Alex Moran is going to answer your question when we come back from break. i got to go, but continue to listen, brother, because she has another response for you. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Zoe Williams on the Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106 XM 149. This is the voice of reason. We're here every Thursday. This is the new voice of reason, 90 minutes long. I need you to get these phone lines on fire. 8772-106-106 is the number to dial. Our topic tonight is sexpectations. Are your sexual desires unrealistic? You need to call me. The show is on fire. We got sex perks. I'll be back in a second. Peace. Voice of reason. So Williams in the building. Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106 XM 149. You know our topic tonight, sexpectations. That's why we're listening to Janet right now. Getting us all moist and, and I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm moist. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> our topic tonight is sexpectations or your sexual desires unrealistic. If you're having an issue in your relationship, a sexual issue, where it might be a sexless relationship, it might be, you know, you know, where you're, you're, you're with a partner who's asking or demanding a particular type of sex act from you that, you know, you're uncomfortable with. Call us tonight. We have two sex uh, sex experts uh, on my panel tonight, and um, I'd love to hear your story. And you can be anonymous. We won't we won't blast you out. And uh, they're going to be here to, to talk to you about it. So 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Dr. Alex Moran, as it relates to our last caller, what do you think his issue was? Well, the issue I would say to Gary is that he has an expectation. His question inherently was, is it wrong for me to expect? Well, in there I would say, I would say yes to what Jackie said. We don't ever want to coerce anyone or force anyone into doing anything. However, um, I mean, if your partner wishes to please you, I would recommend to go take a shower, take a bath, or do something together. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe take a nice little sensual bubble bath and, uh, you know, see if she wouldn't be open to it directly after. I mean, like Zoe said earlier, if the lettuce is not clean, that's a, that's a little, uh, <laughs> a little granular. nasty. But um, honestly, if, I mean, it's not wrong to ask her to be open to trying. Now, if she was to try and she's completely disgusted, well, she tried it once, and you should be happy that she was willing to try. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, our question of the night is, what is the craziest sex act you've been asked slash expected to participate in. Call me at 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. Tonight's topic, one more time, sexpectations. Are your sexual desires unrealistic? Sexpectations. Are you expecting somebody to do something for you that you yourself are not going to do for them? Do you go down or do you want your girl to go down on you but you don't want to go down on her? You don't like fish? Hmm? You got an aversion to fish? Right? Come on, somebody, but you love head. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Susan from Dallas, Big D's in the building. It's your time to chime. Holla. Hi. I am just wondering um, if it's realistic for a mate to ask you to have sex, you know, two and three and four times a week. Um, that's mainly my question. Well, is it too much for you is it, or is it not enough? I, I think it's too much. You think it's too much? Okay, Jackie. And uh, has it always been too much for you, or and are you finding that as you get older, it's not, uh, it's too much? Yeah, as I get older, it's too much. Yeah, and see, that's something that happens to a lot of women as we get older. Uh, oftentimes, our sexual desire uh, starts to decrease, and what we're needing is more uh, attention in that area, more stimulation uh, in order to get aroused. And if he's constantly learning new techniques and how to please you uh, and practicing what uh, we call the Venus butterfly technique on you, then you're going to continue to strengthen uh, your nervous system and it's going to be more pleasurable for you. But uh, when it's not pleasurable, then you're not going to want to do it. And then oftentimes what happens is when we've been in a relationship for a period of time, 
we stop trying new and different things on each other, and we get custom, accustomed to the relationship, and we get bored. It's, um, well, 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 Jackie, yeah. hold on, hold on. Our listeners, you you just really flow in here, but our nis listeners need to know, what is the Venus butterfly technique, and should I take my clothes off <laughs> when you explain it? The Venus butterfly technique is a technique that was created by Moore University that has been around for, oh my goodness, 45 years. The technique was made uh, famous by L.A. Law years ago. A couple was talking about the technique. And um, they've ma you know, had mastered doing it. Well, the, at the same time, you never master it because um, our body... Wait a minute. This is a technique from a TV show? This is a technique from a university. That was popularized by a television show. Exactly. But what and is the technique? What it, is it? It's a manual technique that either the man does on the woman or the woman does on the man that is designed to give you the most intense pleasure possible. But what is the technique? What is, is it her poking him in the navel? What, <laughs> what is it? No. It's a technique that the man does on the woman. It's a manual technique that he's performing on the woman. Somebody's he's performing it on themselves right now. He's put in a particular uh, position so that he can be in this position very comfortably for a long period of time. But what is it? And what position is it? And what what is it? It sounds like real mystical right now. Should I have the Bhagavad Gita out while we're doing it? I mean, it sounds real deep. What a, it sounds like some metaphysical business. When you say what it is, what it is, it's him doing a manual technique to give her. He's getting information from her um, by p putting his... Are they on the computer? No, they're in a sexual position. He's, he's said, I can't describe how he's sitting. But I have videos that demonstrate how to do the technique. And uh, the videos are called for his eyes only and her eyes only, how to make sex more fun. Because for the most part, when you're having intercourse, you have two people focused on two nervous systems. He's focused on usually uh, trying to slow down and she's uh, focusing on trying to hurry up uh -huh. and you can't get information in that particular setting okay l let me stop you right there Jackie because really um, uh, right now uh, <laughs> me and Yoda we were never cool I never understood you know Yoda's philosophy I need it simpler uh, uh, Dr. Alex could you translate well honestly I, I, I um you, I'm you going to answer it. the question in a different way. How yes. about that? Yes, let's see Susan, that. Uh, two to four times a week, I, I would ask for one, um, how old are you? Do we still have Susan? Is she gone? Okay. 40, 47. 47. 47. Okay, so, I mean, this is approaching um, menopause age, which is going to be one of the main influencers of our sexual desire is a our drop. hormone yeah, levels a drop in estrogen right mm -hmm. so uh, also testosterone mm -hmm. is is the big player in your desire level mm -hmm. so as your hormones change testosterone is going to be less present mm -hmm. in your body this is a, a lot of the reason my women will choose to go on uh, hormone replacement therapies because they find that their desire goes away uh, altogether actually that they're not even finding interest so I wouldn't personally equate this with a pleasure issue I mean I'm uh, I'm not going to assume that you don't find pleasure in having sex with your partner well, she's also it's talking just, about the frequency as well right right I'm not going to assume that that just because you don't want to have sex frequently because your desire level is not there that you don't enjoy it um, I would simply say you know there are things to look into um, in terms of supplements that you can take mm. and things like that that could actually increase your desire to have sex period right another interesting point here is uh, hormones play a big role in men too Absolutely. and uh, it, when dr. John Gray was on this show when we did the you know women are from Venus men are from Mars all of that or whatever when we did that thing he said the testosterone level in men today is 40 percent lower than it was in men 50 years ago. So right. he was saying a 35-year-old man today has the testosterone level of a 70-year-old man 50 years ago. That's very interesting. So he was saying that, the, the, and you know, a lot of men are on this 
tribulus and testosterone kind of supplementation just to, you know, keep that up. So, yeah, I mean, this, I, though I find that hard to believe because, you know, you take a 75-year-old man who um, someone could say that he has ED, and you um, bring around a happy, turned-on uh, woman, and he won't have a problem getting aroused. Well, well that's not wait a minute. Completely accurate, uh, yeah. Jackie. I mean, in terms of arousal, will he have a problem feeling actual arousal? But the time that it's going to take for him to achieve erection is absolutely longer than it would take a 35-year-old man to. Uh, and then on top of that, and then on erect. top of that, proximity, normalcy, all of that stuff lowers testosterone. This okay. is why cheating gets the boner on. Let's just be honest. Let, I mean, let's just be honest. The thrill of the chase, the new situation somewhere, that raises testosterone levels as well. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this. We're about to take a quick break. If you want to participate, I got Rashida. I got Kay Rashida in Arizona, Kayla in D.C., Stephanie in the ATL. Hold tight. I'm going to get to all of y'all. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Sexpectations is the voice of reason's topic tonight. I will be back in a second. I'll talk to you in a minute. Peace. If any of these records are on your iPod, I mean, we play some really nice records. you got to have like 12 kids. <laughs> this is the sexiest song list. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, we have returned. And we don't see nothing wrong with a little bumping and grinding. I certainly don't, so. Sexpectations is tonight's topic. If you want to get involved, I encourage you to get involved. I implore you to do so. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. That's 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. You're listening to Sirius 106 XM 149. I'm Zoe Williams, the Voice of Reason. And this is what we do here every Thursday. We try to bring compelling topics. So tonight's topic is sexpectations. Are your sexual desires unrealistic? Come on, call me. I got two sex perks on, on the line. And uh, they're willing to talk to you. I'm willing to talk to you. Tonight's your night to share. So uh, holla at me, okay? Uh, Kalisa from Arizona. You're in the voice of reason. It's your time to shine. Holla. So um, I have a question. Yes. Every Ever since my fiancé proposed to me, like, he's gotten a little bit more, I'm just going to say this, crazy in the bed. So, you know, it started off with just, you know, we kicking and having regular sex and whatnot until, like, all of a sudden now he wants me to, like, can I, can I, be, can I speak freely? Would you just lay it out on the line? Well, he, like, wants me to, like, lick his butt, put my finger in his butt, all kinds of stuff like that. And I was Has he been to jail? <laughs> gay. I'm just, I mean, the way I grew up, like, if anybody, if any man wanted anything next to their behind, they were gay. So I'm like, am I marrying a down low brother? What's going on? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Doc? Kalisha, um, am I saying your name right? Kalisha? Yes. Um, the anus for men, I mean, the prostate proximity there in their anal cavity is extremely packed with nerve endings. Uh, very much so. So much to the point where if you were to go into a doctor's office for certain exams, I don't know if you've ever heard of stimulating the prostate to the point of orgasm, but that would be done through the oh. anus. <laughs> go ahead. But, um, I mean, I can understand uh, where the black community has a huge taboo on anything anal. It's I mean, the male a, community. A, a, a booty phobia. Yes, I mean, it, it does. Um, but I wouldn't say that, that he is down low, gay, or anything. I mean, he really just might like the feeling but of would his you anus say being he stimulated. Isn't. Well, we don't you know this information exactly. because I don't know the individual. Let's steer clear. <laughs> we try not to make assumptions. Yeah, let's right? steer clear. Let's stay on the let's stay on the straight and narrow. <laughs> this is new. Like all of this is new. So I'm just thinking. That's all I keep thinking about. Every time he asks me, and I say no, I never do it. I say no, and every time I, I just think about like. The question is, are you still going to marry him? <laughs> um, no. I mean, I'm like, if the next thing, I, I'm going to have to strap up and poke him. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going to come next? That's exactly what's next. If you feel uncomfortable, I would say that you, you know, He's you shouldn't gonna, do listen. it. But at the same time, I, I wouldn't say that there's anything wrong with it. Dr. Sexy, listen to me. 
This is Zoe Williams' Zoe. time. Let me know, please. He's yeah, going to come to her, good. and he's... Wait, hold on, Jackie. Hold on. I'm going to let you come in. He's going to beg her one day for her to strap on and bang him. I'm Possibly. telling you, it's going to happen. Jackie, what do you think? Well, you can hear in her voice that she's not comfortable with it, and she's going to bring that same inhibition into the bedroom, so she needs to get that resolved. That's a good point. That's a good point. She's just a, Is he open to having a conversation with you, Kalisa? No, he, he pretends like it don't exist. Like the next day when I want to talk about it, he acts like it doesn't exist. Like yeah, you know yeah. There's well, a, that's yeah. the case. Yeah. The communication there needs to be in, in the relationship. And it's like you're getting married and you have you don't have the communication there where you can't talk about that outside of the bedroom. Mm. And that's a very big uh, uh, warning sign. Now, thank you very much. Wow. Appreciate the call. Uh, thank you, Kalisa. You brought Arizona into the building. I appreciate it. Daisy, California, voice of reason. Your time to chime. Holla. Hey, man. Just lay your hand up on me, man. And your name is Daisy. Goodbye, drunkard. Assalamu alaikum. We have to move on. Stephanie, or Stefan from ATL. Your time to chime. Holla. I can't. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Let bro? me just exactly. say this. Hold on, Stefan. Yeah. My, my, my callers, my screeners, for real. Y'all got Y'all can't let uh, you know, like I said, the Down syndrome cats get through. I, we can't do it. Stefan, ATL chime, man. Hey, what's going on, man? Is that Stefan, man? Stefan, like a uh, homeboy from uh, Family Matters, Steve Urkel. Yo, Marbury, however, which one it does. It's the right. <laughs> what's up, man? Talk to me. Ain't much, man. I, after that, I think maybe you, I don't know, but you might be more inclined to answer this for me. Uh, basically, I got an old lady. We've been together for quite a little minute, and she brought it up off and on throughout the relationship. The thing is, we're in a racial relationship. Mm. And the thing is, she really wants to do it, and I don't know. I just think I might just go off on the deep end and have a flashback or something on her. Basically, she want to play like master and slave. Wow. Like, and pretend like I'm actually a slave that done walked out, you know, and then disobedient to master and beat me and mistreat me and be like, nigga this and nigga fuck me this and nigga you do this, good nigga, and, you know, and put all Oh, like, so she want to like really say some things that she probably – you know, has been like deep inside that she's always wanted to say, oh, dude, why are you with this woman? Like, you know, me put on the, the handcuffs, on my, the shackles type thing and everything. Put a little wicker hat on, a little yeah, torn up uh, wife beater. You know, like, matter of fact. I, I, since the winter, I kind of grew out my beard more. She's like, cool, cool. I want you to keep it thick and nappy and don't get your hair cut and just look like basically like a slave and like I'm gonna beat you and ride you and call you all kind of degrading stuff like she really thinks she's gonna get off on that and I'm like I don't know baby because I might just have a root moment on you and, and put some harm on you I don't, don't want to go there oh my goodness uh doc well let's go Jackie Jackie what do you think of this uh... I mean, I know okay. fetish is a he's part okay. of the game. And he's okay with it? He's enjoying this? Uh, my thing is, I don't know. Yeah, you are. <laughs> now get the ride, and then she'd be like, Yes, nigga, you do what I say, nigga. You done sneaked out the house, nigga. Bad nigga. And something. you're enjoying this? No, nah, we never done it. Come I'm on, crazy. man. You make, you make the brothers look real bad right now. <laughs> Seriously, homie. Come on. Let me just say this. Let me just. You're not making this up. You're telling me that she's already said, yes, nigga, good nigga, that she's already gave you that? No, she's saying, like, that's what she wants to do. So you haven't done this yet? No. But she has said it. Oh, she said it. Come on, man. Come back. I know there's some really good sisters out there, dude. There, there's some good sisters out there. And I'm not one to go against interracial dating. I mean, love is where it is. Wherever you find it, that's where it is. But this is a, And this is what I always say, man. Don't date nobody, man, that doesn't understand you culturally. To me, if she doesn't re understand you culturally, doesn't respect, like, you know, your lineage, where you come from, your struggle, who we are, what we're about, to me, that's just, I don't care what gets you off. When you get to that point, it gets to a space of degrading. 
You understand degradation there? I, 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 I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not on deck with that one, brother. Do, uh, Dr. Sexy, what do you think? Uh, that there sounds like uh, I'm going to have to second what you said that's there. A so, shot because right honestly, there. that's uh, there is a specific fetish that has to do with humiliation and degradation. And, what is it called? Um, this is under the BDSM community. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, generally, it's actually men who uh, have positions of power that participate in these types of acts. And uh -huh. this is a very much so a generalization. But uh, that, to me, sounds like something if you weren't comfortable with, then, I mean, you should just say. And I would take the time, uh, like Jackie was saying, the communication within relationships is absolutely essential if you guys are going to make it. Being with different cultures and backgrounds, uh, I would explain to her and tell her, I mean, if she, I mean, to me, it's kind of common sense on that one, uh, why a black person might feel that that's inappropriate. Well, but I would explain to her, honestly, you know, maybe she really doesn't know. And in sex, in the realm of sexuality, the biggest issue is lack of education. And so you know what else is crazy? She might not just know. And, 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 know. and you know what else is crazy? We did this show before. We did the fetish show early last year, and we talked about. Um, the Mandingo parties. Oh, right, right. Yeah, right, we right. talked about the Mandingo parties, and that's when, you know, these affluent white women go to these parties with, you know, a gang of black brothers just so they can get their African fantasy on. African fantasy, and that was also about uh, the big black penises. Yes, Wasn't that yes. what that was about? Yeah, that might just be like women that, that like... Large penises. Yeah, well, you the, never know. The, I'm not going to take it there with the Mandingo party. Hey, that's what this, they say. This the, instance here that um, we're having is a little. That's very yeah, different. This, this is the slave trade party that she's different. trying to have. Man, I appreciate your call, brother. Uh, it's a strange one, but Jesus, get out is what I say. <laughs> D from Philly, you're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. Yeah. What up, man? This is actually Daniel from North Carolina. Donnell from North Carolina. Yes, sir. What up, man? You. Uh, good evening, ladies. Uh, my good question evening. is, uh, me and my wife, well, we've been together about seven years. Uh, last four years, I, we, we just got married. But the last four years of our relationship, the sex has been kind of bad. I think it has a lot to do with the kids. that We had two kids back to back. Um, my question to you is, we have a sex problem. Um, I'm very high active sex guy. Um, my wife's not into it. I think it can be medical. Uh, how do I ask her or tell her or try to convince her maybe to go to the doctor and check and see if there's something going on medical with her not having the urge to have sex with her? Mm, how old is she? Uh, 30. Don't tell her I told you. <laughs> oh, well, she's young. She's how, uh, how old are your kids that you said you recently had children? Yes, they're six and five, and they're thirteen months apart. Okay, uh, one of those, one of the issues with when children being present in relationships that um, a lot of couples will complain about is the simple act of being exhausted, just being tired all the time. You know, and women's hormones actually, again, back to the hormones, they do change after giving birth. Um, but these are some of the things where, uh, if I mean, can I ask you why you think it might be medical? Uh, to me personally, it's just she doesn't have the, uh, the feminine. To me, it's like a, a high piece of what I would say. It's, well, no, no, no. it's medical because it's not just with the sex itself. I, it's, it's more with the compassion part, too. She don't hug uh -huh. me and touch me as much as she used to. And I ask her, is it something that I have done? I mean, we just got married this past July. Well, let me, often, wait, wait, wait. Hold how, on, often let... are they having, how often are you having sex? Maybe two, three times a month. Ooh. Let me, wow. let, let me ask you this. I'm just 28. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, brother. Has it always been like this, or after the kids did it become like this? Uh, about a year after the kids. Mm. That's so I say it's been going on now about four years. Yeah. Wow. And, and this is a very common problem that you're having after kids and you know, you the monotony sets in into a relationship, and everything else uh, starts to become um, more a important. priority. Yeah. And yeah. Um, with women, 
it's like if they're not using it, they're going to use, lose it. So if she's not continuing to have intimacy, then she, unlike men, she doesn't w desire it as often as a man would who's, as time goes on, who hasn't had it. And one of the things that it's important to do is to make sure that you make your relationship a priority and set aside alone intimate time to be together. And it takes both people willingness to do that in order for the relationship to work. Because you can always make excuse about, you know, not having time or the kids. But if you don't make your relationship a priority, no one else will. And you have to set aside that alone time and don't allow any t anything else to get to infringe on that time. Okay, so Jackie, just hold on a second. D, I want you to stay on the line. We've got to take another quick break. But before we do so, uh, I need to read something to you guys because this is one of our sponsors here on the Foxhole. Um, according to a recent study, 74% of men said they would have an, an extramarital affair if they couldn't get caught. Are you one of these men? Would you have sexual relations outside of your marriage if you could keep it a secret? Well, now you can at AshleyMadison.com. AshleyMadison.com is a dating service specifically for married men and women looking to have a secret affair. Why is Ashley Madison the best place to have an affair? Because you'll meet married women who have just as much reason to keep your affair a secret as you do. With over 5 million members, can you believe Ashley Madison is the fastest growing dating service in America? It's completely secure, 100%, completely anonymous, and free to join. So if you're looking for sex that you're not getting at home, don't sleep with a single woman who could potentially exploit you. Instead, date a married woman who has just as much reason to keep it a secret as you do. Try it today, absolutely free, AshleyMadison.com, the only place you can be sure to have a discreet affair. And I know a gang of people going to email me, and I'm going to give you my email address right now. That's Z-O at Sirius-Radio.com. Let me just say this really quickly. Ashley Madison, the founder of it, will be on my show this coming 11th of February. So I'm going to go at them. We're going to talk. We're going to build. They're already booked. It's called, what is it, Las Vegas of Online. Once you log in, what stays here, <laughs> we're going to have them on our show anyway. So please tune into that show. It's going to be incredible. Ashley Madison is a new sponsor of the Foxhole, and we're going to discuss their relevance we're about to take a quick break. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. You're listening to the Voice of Reason. Zoe Williams, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. Sexpectations is the topic. Call me. I want to talk to you. Peace. And we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. That was my homeboy, Chase Skizza. You know what I'm saying? Dina Love, that's what we do. I had to go to the homies to just hook me up. I, my other homeboy had the, the original intro at the beginning. He works on the show. He came with the fire as well. Uh, again, tonight's topic, sexpectations. Are your sexual desires and drives realistic? And our question of the night was, what is the craziest sex act you've been asked to and expected to perform in your relationship. What is the craziest thing you've been expected to perform sexually in your relationship? Uh, we have a bunch of questions. Uh, does your partner's sexual expectations intimidate you in the bedroom? If so, why? Call in and let us know. 877-2106-106. That is the number to dial. Before I move on, I want to reintroduce my guests. I have two very well-respected uh, professionals in their field. Dr. Alex Moran, she has a Ph.D. in human sexuality. She's, uh, I mean, if you listen to the Voice of Reason, she's been here, what, ten, ten times, something like that? She's, she's, she's wonderful, and she's as fine as her expertise is solid, right? Thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm not going to say right, but I'll say thank you. Yeah, she's, she's <laughs> trust me, she's, she's all right. Uh, and Jackie Fine, her name doesn't lie either. She's also um, 
you know, a sex specialist, and, and she went to the American Institute of something sexual, I think. Uh, <laughs> the, Amer the American Institute for Sexual Studies is where she went to. So, And like I said, she's a regular on radio all over the country. Um, again, I want you guys to reach out to me, 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. We have a lot of callers, but I can get to you guys because, again, this is the new voice of reason, 90 minutes long, and we have extra lines. So don't be afraid. Reach out, 877-2106-106. That's the number to dial. Sexpectations. That's what we're doing. And Twitter me, at Foxhole, or Twitter me, at Zoe Williams. Now, on to our callers. Uh, D from North Carolina, we're back I'm with in. you. All right. So... Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. I, I was just trying to see if she has. She didn't quite answer my question. Uh, how do you? What the situation I have going on? Do you think it's medical or do you think it's just something else? <laughs> I didn't get to finish answering, but um, I would not jump to saying that it's a medical issue. Have you discussed this issue with her? Have you yeah. tried to communicate about it with her? Yeah, and she's. Like every other woman, I uh, guess, a little aggressive about it. When I say I have said something to hey, her about Hey, 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 every other woman is not like that. All right, let him finish. <laughs> let this man do what he's doing. Go ahead, brother. First thing I said, and I'm in this, the sad thing about it, I'm in the nursing field. I'm LPN. And, um, first Nurse Dre. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was like, um, it's common, you know, we just started out, I started out a general conversation about uh, what the girls at my job was talking about. I worked with a whole lot of females. And uh, we she, we always start conversations this way, and so I was like, well, baby, you know, me and you kind of been having a little problems there, you know, and she was like, what you mean? I said, well, you know, trying to get you in the mood and, and getting you to want to do it. I, I feel maybe you, you just don't have that push for it. And so, D, her, D, let me, D let, me, let me cut you real quick. Let me stop you for a second. Does sure. she work and take care of the kids? Well, to take care of the kids, I think we do that 50% each way, but, but I, I mean, even but she does work, yeah. She works uh Right, right. so she probably, do, does she complain about having a double shift, you know, come home from work and then got to come home and work with the kids and deal with the kids? I mean, does she complain about these things as well? Uh, In the past, and of course, as any other man, I stepped up to the plate. Well, the bottom line is, brother, the bottom line is your wife is no different from a lot of women out there. She's tired, stressed, right. you know what I'm saying? This is, hold on, Jackie. Hold on, Pam. Let me finish my point. Now, um, you know, seriously though, uh, women are are struggling out there because of that n that never-ending to-do list, as uh, Dr. John Gray would say. You know, they're out there working uh, in in the testosterone-driven corporate America, and then come home and has to be mama and nurturer, and they tired. Sometimes they don't feel sexy. So it might not be a medical situation. It just might be a stress management situation. It might be a scheduling situation. It could be a bunch of things that could be fixed if you guys had the the proper communication skills to be able to sit down and say, "I'm not going to communicate you communicate with you through the filter." of stress. I'm not going to let this, you know, because sometimes when you're stressed, you communicate through that filter. You're communicating stress. Like, I, hey, man, I don't have time. I want to talk about it. Or I don't feel like it. You understand what I'm saying? It could be that, bro. So, again, man, I appreciate you reaching out. There are a lot of, let me say this, there are a lot of ways to deal with the stress. You know, uh, you can, you know, a bubble bath. It's called self-soothing. You know, a bubble bath, music, whatever it is. Hey, honey, if you need an hour just to yourself when you get home I got the kids for an hour even if we just gotta take a, a trip to fucking Baskin Robbins or whatever you get an hour or whatever sometimes we just need to download from the day download from the stresses that we're facing and that's how we support each other in those type of relations those, those codependent kind of relationships go ahead I just want to recommend a couple things to you just to try since you know if she's not feeling like this is a problem um, I would one in just in the, the repetitiveness and routines of relationships and the busyness and you're both working, you have kids, I would say try to schedule a date night, a time when you two are going to have time together, and you're going to go out for dinner, and you might ask have some, a movie or something. Ask some family member to watch right, the kids. Right, and have someone watch the kids and, you know, um, you start getting in the habit of doing that and so that you can get back your intimacy that it sounds like you're lacking. Right. Another thing would be to make sure that you have some kind of non-sexual touch 
uh, at least three times a day. Go, go, go in so, there. So, and when I mean non-sexual touch, I'm saying, you know, when you get wake up in the morning to give her a kiss or something gentle touches, you know, to give each other hugs, you should have um, share a kiss that lasts at least 10 seconds wow. once a day. These type of things, because if she's thinking every single time that you come up to kiss her, it's just because you want to have sex, right. she's going to just stop wanting to be touched altogether, especially if she's having a difference in desire. So just try to do these things. These are little things and changes that you can make that might help her back into the intimacy in your relationship. So Jackie, Jackie, this yes. is an intimacy thing for, for this couple, do you think? Well, you know, he said something else also. He said uh, uh, he was having a, he told his wife that he was having a conversation with some other women, one, and that he had mentioned to her about her having a problem too and there could also be resistance with her because because one, of the choice of words yeah it's comparing her to other women and women don't want to be compared to other women because each woman is different and each woman is different every day so what pleased her today may not please her tomorrow and she's wanting you to, to not even associate her with another group of women, but to associate her with herself and find out what pleases her. And if you think that she has a problem, then she's going to be resistant and not open to... Right, especially if you come at her like, you, the, the, it's, something's wrong with you. Exactly. I understand what you're saying. That's a good point. Brother D, thank you for the call. We're Wes from New York. You're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. Hey, I, I great conversation i have a question for the ladies here's two things why is it when you're giving head either way and someone puts a finger in your ass and it accentuates the orgasm because for me when she does that to me it's off the chain or when she and i do that for her it's unbelievable what is it about that that it makes the orgasm during oral that much better dr sexy that's, that's uh, excuse me. That's Dr. Alex Moran. Thank you, Zoe. Good. Uh, that's like I um, was speaking to the caller earlier. Uh, it's there are so many nerve endings in in your rectum and your anus area. So many. So if you're stimulating both areas and. It's very delicate, and the tissue is easy to tear, so, so I'm going to rec make sure that you're doing it softly and with lubrication. But uh, if you're stimulating that area, it's going to enhance. I mean, if so you saying, are open to having that done, because if you're not, if you're closed off, then, then you will... Uh, then you will just be uncomfortable, period. But if you enjoy it, then you're feeling those sensations. There's a lot of nerve endings. Wow. That's, that is the uh, quick answer. Man. Elongated form. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Jackie? Yeah. Hey, I Jackie, agree. do you ha do you have something to add? No, I agree with what she's saying. That's okay. Uh, well, let, let, such a, uh, a big turn on. Okay. Well, let me do this. If you want to get involved in this conversation, now's the time. Eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six is the number to dial. We are not rushed. This is the new voice of reason. Ninety minutes long. Please call me. Eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six is the number to dial. Sexpectations. Are your sexual desires and drives realistic? Of course, we have special guests Jackie Fine and Dr. Alex Moran in the studio. They're sex experts. They've both been to school. They know about it. I've just participated in it my all my whole life. Well, not my whole life. Yeah, whole life. I think I started uh, getting down with the get down at 13. Wow. Yeah, I was bad. I was hopping gates and running from mamas and all kinds. Get your daughter fucking ass out of here. I've heard it all. Ladies and gentlemen, please reach out and let us know what's cracking. 877-201-106-106. That's the number to dial. D, from Philly. You're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. Hi there. I think that, um, well, I'll start out. I'm 36, and I think that my sex expectations are a little high. And I don't. And Give me an bed. example. Give me an example. Give me well, three sex expectations that you think are high. Well, I think number one, it's uh, if I could have sex two times a day, five days a week, I'd be a happy girl. I'm not saying I'm not a happy girl, but I think that I want sex too much. I I came into my sexual revolution in my early 30s and he's in he's 40 but i think that's number one number two uh 
I think we lack some intimacy and okay. So wait, D, 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 do me this. Just yeah. hold on, because I really want to get into your conversation. Just hold on. We got to take one more quick break. I appreciate you reaching. Just stay with me. I'll be come come right back to you. Okay. D, you you, you uh, are you with me? I'm D. Here. Okay, good. Now, we have to take this quick break. You're listening to the Voice of Reason, Zoe Williams, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. Sexpectations is the conversation. I expect to hear from you when I get back. Peace. Yo, we're back. Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio. This is Zoe Williams. Zometheus Rising. Tonight's topic, Sexpectations. I want to thank all the new listeners, right? Man. I know we get new listeners all the time, man. So I want to thank everybody that uh, tuned in from last year that's been with me uh, for the last year and some change. You know, in April, it'll be our second anniversary here on the Foxhole. But I want to thank all the new listeners and, and, and welcome you all to this experience. And if you want to reach out to me at any time, any point, you can hit me at zo at Sirius-Radio.com. That's zo at sirius dash radio.com i appreciate everybody who calls man d continue your story sweetie sex fixations is the topic let's go well, well i guess really i want to get to my biggest issue and and i'm afraid that i've fallen into a a pitfall one you're you're women maybe i'm generalizing but you think okay men want to have sex all the time and so i'm a woman who wants to have sex all the time but but we're not and when we do, um, he cannot reach an orgasm vaginally. Like, he needs to have a blowjob. And I love giving him a blowjob. I'll give him a blowjob eight times a week. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Hold on, sweetie, because this is quite strange for me. Uh -huh. he, you <laughs> mean he can't. For me. <laughs> I'm just saying, he can't ejaculate while he's in the yogurt box? Well, I'll look at him sometimes. When and he'll be struggling. Flat. He'll be wincing. It looks like he's digging a hole in the yard. I'm like, oh. you know, and so, of course, I'm a very vocal person, and I'm like, uh, what's going on? What is it me? Is there something wrong? And he says, well, for me to have an orgasm, if I'm only going to have one shot. He's like, you can have 12, but if I'm going to have one shot, I want it at the best way I can. And he says, he's a marksman. getting a blowjob. He'll need one shot. He's a marksman. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Answer. Okay, D, there's, there's a couple things. First, you called and you said that, you know, you want to have sex two times a day is, is something wrong. No, there is nothing wrong. There is such right. a vast range of desires. Uh, one thing in coupling that is important, though, is to try to have matched, matched levels of desires. Now, of course, those are going to change through different times of your life, but um, there are some people that just naturally have very high levels of desires and some people that have very low. Uh, secondly, the blowjob issue, if you will. The the sensation of a blowjob to a, to a man, because that's only that you can give it to. Are you asking is, me? <laughs> the sensation of a blowjob for some men, you, you have a lot of different sensations going on and you're able to use things ah. that you can do with your mouth that your vagina probably can never replicate. I it's mean, called, I don't know how to suck a penis it's called with my vagina. Yumification. <laughs> there's a lot of things that we can do with our mouths. So this is nothing wrong with you to because that's okay. what he likes. That's right. just the way that he likes it. And I can understand, it's completely understandable to feel like, you know, is there something that you're doing wrong? It's just my vagina, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it... I would, you know, did you ever ask him, is this, is it like this across the board? Is it just me as your partner that this is what you've been doing or, you know, but a quick, short answer, easiest to say no. It's just your mouth does a lot of things that your vagina can't do. That's amazing. Thanks, Dee, for the call. We appreciate you reaching out to the Voice of Reason. Thank this, you. You're more than welcome. I'll be here every Thursday. Call back. Um, and, and then another thing, behavior. You know, behavior is ambiguous. We define it based off of what our preference and our taste is. Right. Oh, yeah. Some, and so can I add something to that? Yeah, well, as soon as I finish. Well, go ahead. No. Go ahead, Jackie. Yes. And so um, 
What I wanted to say is that sex is not only physical, it's mental as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, if he believes that that's the only way that he can get off, then chances are that's what he's going to, that's the only way he's going to be able to get off. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what's happening as well. So he's believing that that's the only way that he can get off. You're saying it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because of what he's believing about the act. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, can, I, I can buy that. I can buy a bag of dope for that. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, uh, Jackie. Let's move on to Mike from Texas. You're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. Buddy, what's up? I'm all right, buddy. On? I'm good. I'm, li I'm listening to y'all talk about my stuff. This is this is my this is my technique. I can't figure out where it is. The females think all their asses are made of gold, and the men got to run after them. What about it's a two way street? Okay, give me an example of that two way street you're trying to drive down. Okay, uh, if I'm buying groceries, you buy groceries. If I'm cleaning up, you clean up. That, that is that how y'all have sex? <laughs> I mean, that's what this now, is I'm about. I'm just giving you a scenario how it works. Okay, well, how's that fucking, I'm out? fucking. I'm, you fucking, I'm fucking. If you don't want to, don't do it. Don't do it to make yourself feel like you're going to keep me. You understand what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Well, what happens what? if you want her to do something and she doesn't want to do it? I don't necessarily concern myself about what she needs on the, on the oh, top lovely. of it. Wow. I, I how, mean, how, how, how long have you I'm been like out of a relationship? Man. I'm like Bernie Mac. Uh, you better come on because we ride. But if you don't want to get involved, don't get started. Don't just okay. lay it out there for me to get. Or so, uh, uh, how many of them do you have out there on the track? Pardon me? I was just saying, how many of them do you have out there on the track? Oh, bro, I'm married. I'm, I'm happily married. <laughs> and I you don't like care about uh, you don't care about what your wife wants? Oh, me and her, we got it going on. I'm just listening to your conversation. I'm like Jackie. I'm adding to what what needs to be added. I was wow. listening to your girl just talk about what she likes to do. And what he does, what he does, and I was also listening to my boy talk about um, his wife and his, her problems and telling another woman problems. That's what pushes another man away when she doesn't want to do it. Got it, and man. I appreciate it. Now, but basically, you don't have to tell your business to other people just like what I'm doing now. You don't really need to necessarily talk about it. Just get in and come home if you're going to do it that way. If she doesn't want to, man, go find yourself. Hey, man. Come thank you. Home, thank man. you, Michael. Michael, thank you. I've got to go, brother. I appreciate the call. My goodness. I mean, his conversation was all over the place like uh, the pieces of a chessboard after an earthquake. Just everywhere. I don't, okay, let's let's move on. Challenge from Chi-Town. You're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. What's up? Hey, I just want to make the statement, first of all, sex is compromising, and sex is... I forgot what I was going to say. Damn. Oh wow! You've been on hold a long time. I see. Yeah, your name. I know. I know. Yeah. I, I just, I just heard your voice. Yeah, sex is compromised and aggressive. But I wanted to make a statement about yeah, uh, a previous call you had. Uh huh. Uh, this guy, he uh, had this um, white girl. Come on, people do that in bi in uh, interracial relationships. You know. Uh, they play uh, slave master. They no, play no, no, colonizer, no, no, colonizee. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I want you to please hear me out. I will. You know, uh, you get, you know, you like I say, sex is compromised and aggressive. I've had white girls, you know, pull their hair, come here, bitch, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah, give me that black dick, you know, all that type of stuff. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. Now, the abusive part, hitting each other, okay, I got a little issue with that, you know. But what I really wanted to call you about. So let me was, ask you um, this. Have black people forgiven white people for slavery? Because I guess we have it. We let them say, no, I'm just, I'm just Man, fucking. look, if you're in a relationship with a white woman, come on. You know, whatever turns the other one on, as long as it's not abusive. When right, no holds barred. That's it. an issue. You know, I got Now, he said she wanted to hit, beat him and all that, and I got an issue with that. I've had white women, you know, I didn't, I didn't hurt them. And I pull their hair and, you know, fuck me, you know, give me that black dick and all that shit. Nigga, you know, that ain't nothing. Right, you know, Dolomite that, told I mean, us how to do it. Uh, yeah. Look, a, 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 a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets, you know, keep all that shit in the crib. Don't nobody know about it. It's all good. But Appreciate what I really it, man. wanted to do was um, uh, ask a question, <laughs> and then I wanted to make a suggestion to you, Zoe. Okay, uh, I wanted to ask the question this. If you have an ED problem, if you mm. jog, wouldn't that help the situation? Hmm, that's interesting. If you jog? I think it's a, is this a, I think it's like an exercise you know, if you question. Up, if you get that up, wouldn't that help the um, situation with your penis, you know, making it stronger, making a man feel like, you know, I mean, because it's about blood in a penis, right? 
Uh, yeah. That's partially the issue. Uh, ec- cardiovascular exercise being more in shape, yes, yes, will help. Yes. I mean, yeah. if, if, but if that's, that's that's one broad. Of the that's of the issue. Yeah. So I'm gonna say the the short answer and cardiovascular being in shape, healthy is yeah, and helpful. And that's broad that's because a very broad question. You you could jog but eat horribly and still suffer from ED because of your eating habits. Right. You know, you could... There's so many causes. Yeah, it's connected so to a lot of causes. things. And then there's psychological causes, Absolutely. there's mental causes, there's hormonal causes. So it could be a whole myriad of different things. So that's a quagmire. I wouldn't just say if you if you can't get it up, go for a run. I wouldn't recommend, recommend yeah. that at yeah, all. You know, my shit ain't working. I'm going to run around the block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it ain't going to help. <laughs> uh, you're, you're not going to make it. Yeah, as Johnny Mac would say. Anyway, I appreciate the call, brother. Thank you, my man. Uh, ben, from Con- no, you know what, Ben? Hold on. Hold on. I got to take a quick break. But before I do that, let me read this. I need y'all to join Cheryl Underwood every Tuesday. At 10 p.m. on the east, 7 p.m. on the west. Cheryl Underwood has a great show. It's political, sex in the serious. She's got a great cast over there. Kyle, Glenda the Good Witch, you know, uh, white boy Jim Kelly, you know, white James. You know, I love, I like white James. He's different than black James. But <laughs> he's funny. Check out Cheryl Underwood. She has a great show. It's the Foxhole Live also where, you know, on Monday nights, you know what? We got a lot of things happening. Monday nights, Foxhole Live at the Conga Room. Of course, Corey Holcomb is on deck with us. Y'all got to check out his show. It's going to be crazy. It's what I call niggerific. <laughs> he speaks a language, uh, niglabic. You know, you guys understand it very succinctly when he talks to you because it's real. So I, I suggest you guys check him out. It's a hot show, and it's been a long time coming. Uh, also, on Wednesday nights, Foxhole Live Comedy at Buffalo Wild Wings in Torrance. I was there last night. That was the inaugural show. They're going to be there every Wednesday. Foxhole Live Comedy at Wild Wings in Torrance, California. And that time is, is of course, 10 p.m. on the east, 7 p.m. on the west. Uh, Foxhole Sirius XM, we're doing it big. So y'all need to get at us. And, of course, Thursday night, Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason. I'm here. We're going to do this. I'm about to take a quick break. So please call me, 877-2106-106, if you want to participate in our Sexpectations conversation. I'll be back in a second. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams, the Voice of Reason, has returned. So meet the is rising in the Foxhole. Sirius 106, XM 149, Sexpectations. Are your sexual desires realistic? That is our topic tonight. I want you to call in. I'm welcoming my new listeners every time I come back. I know there's more, y'all. So please call me. We talking about sexpectations. Now, are, are, are you a sexual liberal who dates slash is married to a bedroom conservative? Hmm? Are you dating someone who's just a little too conservative while you're very, very liberal? Right? Like free, I want to do whatever I do. Let's try, let's experiment, let's jump it off. And then you're dating someone whose uh, turtleneck is too tight. Call me. Let me know. 877-2-106-106 is the number to dial. I'm here with my special guest, Dr. Alex Moran. She's in studio. And Dr. No, she's not a doctor, I don't think. But she's a sexpert, Jackie Fine. And she's on the phone line. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to talk to them, please reach out. 877-2-106-106. That's the number to dial. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear about the sexual dealings in your bedroom. Does your partner's sexual expectations intimidate you in your bedroom? And if so, why? Have you ever dated someone who's sexual? Well, no, I don't want to go there. We might hurt somebody. So let me go back to my question of the show, right? What is the craziest sex act you've been asked slash expected to participate in? Somebody call me and tell me what the craziest thing somebody asked you to do. And were you thinking about walking out when they did it? Call me, 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Ben from Kentucky, you're in the voice of reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. Hey, what's going on, Zoe and the sex first? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> How y'all doing? Chilling, man. Let's holla. All right. I just wanted to call, man. Um, I, I'm a 37-year-old man, truck driver, and I'm home on the weekend. You know, I might get to come home like once during the week, but mainly I'm home on the weekend. So is it wrong of me to want or expect sex on the weekends when I come home? Because it turned into 
Oh, you you expect him, you know, you treat me like a piece of meat or, you know, and I'm like, hold up. You okay, know, let me, I let okay, me. I got I got where you're going. I'm going to answer this first, and then I'm going to throw it to the ladies. No, it's not wrong, but yes, it is. And I'll tell you why it is. It is if you're coming across in a coercive, like, this is what has to happen kind of zone. But no, it isn't, because that's your woman, and you want to be intimate. But it can't be, it, see, intimacy and getting off to me is two different things like men we have a tendency to want to have sex for a goal with a purpose in mind we're like goal oriented I want to get in and bust off I don't want to cuddle and oxytocin with you I just want to bust off and relieve the stress of sitting in a truck driving across the country right but the woman wants hey man it takes a minute to warm me up this is an oven this is not a microwave put the shit on simmer raise the temperature slowly I'll get there I'm with you but dude is like hey I've got heavy balls and I've been carrying them with me while I was on the road so yeah it's right for you to go home and say yo I wanna get off but it's also wrong to come in with the energy of this is what's gotta happen where it feels like you're coercing her and you're not connecting with her intimately. Dr. Sexy, which is Alex Moran, talk to me. I really don't know if we need to say anything more than what you just said. You summed it up fabulously. Hey, it's I what I do. I agree with you 100%. Yes, yes. This is why I get paid the little bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, you, you want to add to that? No, I agree with you 100%. Well, there it is. They were shut down. Brother Man, I appreciate you for calling. Reach out anytime. Voice of Reason, Sirius 106, XM 149. Sexpectations is our topic tonight. Summer, Texas, you're in the Voice of Reason. It's your time to chime. Holla. Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Great. All right, so I'm going married, and me and my boyfriend did, well, my husband, i got to stop saying it. <laughs> me and my husband have not lived together before we got married. And so, you know, I'm still trying to get used to the... You don't like him. ...privacy thing. Well, you know, he stays in the bathroom and not pee, and he keeps doing it. Wait, 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 wait. Like, Say that again so our listeners can absorb that. What does he do? Slowly. Like, okay, when I'm in the bathroom peeing, like, he... And I'm just like, okay, is he getting off? Because there's some things that he said, you know, while he was going down on me, and, like, I would have to go to the bathroom. I tell him, stop, I have to get up to go pee. He'd be like, oh, bro, you can just go right here in my mouth. But then, like, he'd be oh. all laughing, and I'm like, just stop. And, like, I'm just really feel like, you know, pretty soon he's going to ask me to, like, pee on him or it's something. It's coming. Like, Get ready, baby. What, what kind of person it's, have I made? What I, what I want oh you to do. God. This is what I want you to do, sweetie. I want you to go to 7-Eleven, and I want you to go get some Avion. Get the biggest Avion they got. And I want you to drink, buy like 12 of them, because he's going to want you full and raring to go. When he, no, when he I, can't, I can't do I didn't sign off for this kind of shit. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he's going to ask you to pee on him, and you've got to do it because you love him, right? I don't love nobody. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't know. So like, it, I, I, he's, he, he's everything I've ever wanted in the man, but... Except for the pee part. Right. And it was like, oh, I'm just praying that he just keeps it to himself and, like, go find a prostitute or something. He's not going to do it. He's oh. not going to do it. He's going to ask you to pee in his mouth. And when you do, are you going to kiss him later? Hell no. I'm not going to. I'm going to get him to the Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Foxholes caller of the night. Piss mouth. <laughs> the boy <laughs> wants you to. <laughs> he wants you to lace him up. Like, he on some hard chemo type shit. I don't get down like that. So let me ask you this: Is that a deal breaker for you? If he, if he like really comes at you and says, "Look, this is what I need. This is what I want. This will get me off." Will you terminate the relationship? Yes, yes, I will. You mean you wouldn't just? What, you wouldn't pee in his mouth on the way out? No. Just here, man. Just, you know, I'm out. Here you go. And that's no. it. 
No, no, no. That is degeneracy, and I will have no part of it. No. Degeneracy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Dr. Sexy. What do you think about this unique situation, and what is this called? What is this fetish called? Isn't there Europhilia. a... Europhilia. That's the fetish right there. Uh, that fetishes are often things that are, I mean, they're very taboo. It's something that a lot of people wouldn't disclose, period. Um, but it doesn't sound like he has disclosed it to you yet, right? He, he When he comes in, he just comes in the room with you while you're in the bathroom? Or I'm sorry, I didn't hear clearly what you said then. He said, we going to pee. Oh, we're That's going what he, to pee. We're going <laughs> to pee. Like, you pee. know, like we, we have the pee. same bathroom, and you know, you're getting ready in the morning, and mm -hmm. he might be shaving, and I'll be in the shower, you know, just in the bathroom together at the same time. And when I happen to pee, whatever he's doing, and look at me. And that's not normal. Like, I've had bosses... Um. And yeah, he might disagree. Ew, ew. If we talk to him, he'd be like, "This girl crazy as hell." I mean, honestly, I don't want to. <laughs> that that's one of those things with cohabitation. Period. That this is a this could simply be a difference in personal space. Right. Some people were raised in that. Oh my God, absolutely not. It's a private thing. This is what we do. But in different families, you know, it could be something normal. People come and go while they're peeing. Now, the comment with the whole uh, "Won't you just go in my mouth?" thing that kind of leads me to believe something different. But I mean, if I were you, this is your husband. What Jackie was saying uh, earlier in the show was communication. This is your husband. You should be able to communicate with Listen. him. Ask him. Listen, good, good. <laughs> ask him if that's what he's Listen, wanting. A great sex life is tied to your ability to communicate openly and honestly. Yeah. And, if you, and if you cannot do that, I mean, it's going to be robotic. It's going to be old really quick. It's just going to be bunk. It's going to be repetitive. But you got to be able to talk. You got to be able to just open up and be free with yourself and who you are. And if you have a partner that understands that, you know, the sex will be better. Ladies and gentlemen, the Voice of Reason Sex Expectations show is coming to a close. But I urge you guys to email me, zo at serious-radio.com, or Twitter me at, uh, at Zoe Williams Twitter or at Foxhole. I urge you guys to continue the conversation out into the blogger sphere. I really appreciate everybody for being on the show. Dr. Alex Moran was absolutely stellar, as was my good, now new friend, Jackie Fine. Um, is there a place, Jackie, where, like a website or something, they can find you? Yes, they can visit me online at www.justaskjackie, J-A-C-K-I-E, justaskjackie.com, or they can call 1-800-874-8865. Wait, say the website one more time and nice and melty like you just did. <laughs> Sounds like a Mexi melt. Go ahead. www.justaskjackie.com. Just ask Jackie, J A C K I E, just ask Jackie.com. Very good, very good. Uh, Dr. Moran? Um, I'm going to just give you my quick site, just at myspace.com backslash Dr. Alex4, the number four, you, the letter U, and the number two. Very good, very good. Tonight's show was absolutely wonderful. I appreciate you guys for coming and sharing your expertise. It made for a wonderful night. And now I go into my final thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I'm here every Thursday, so reach out and let's talk about it. Our callers tonight were great. Joe from California dropped because he was mumbling and he was missing a chromosome. Uh, Cloud from Buffalo said his craziest sex act um, was uh, she. Wait, somebody had the, uh, the chocolate shower. Mm. They had, nobody wants the chocolate shower. Marcus from Texas. She wanted me to lick her behind and she hadn't bathed. That was his problem. I say, listen, divorce her. Kick her out. Anybody, that, listen, sex without bathing is, you know, that's, you know. But then again, some women get turned on by the pheromone of perspiration. You know, that's how women, you know, especially if they're ovulating, that's how they pick, you know, the suitable mate. So maybe a little must on you might be good unless you're teabagging. Now, um, uh, Gary from Atlanta, his ex used to lick his ass, and he got used to it. Is it wrong for him to expect from his current girl to continue to ass lick dance? 
I no, I don't think so. <laughs> I, hey man, what to each is on. We had a wonderful. We had a bunch of callers tonight, and it was great. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you guys to reach out to me and let me know what's cracking with you. I want to talk to you. Again, my email address is zo at sirius-radio.com. And next week's topic, I have a great one. If he can't use our comb, don't bring him home. Our special guest will be author Karen Folan and actress Tashina Arnold. If he can't bring, if he can't use our comb, don't bring him home. We'll be talking about how black women are starting to leap over the racial divide and interracial dating. They're going and doing their thing. So please reach out to us next week. We have another riveting topic, and I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Sirius XM Satellite Radio. I'm out. Peace. Lord.